guys, Richard Holden here, and welcome to the channel. This is a great day. We've got two 5-liter Fords, both of them supercharged, one carbureted and one fuel-injected. What happens when we change the camshaft? Can we make more power at less boost? What happens when we change the pulley? Can we make more power at more boost? Wait a second, Richard. How can we do both? In this video, we're going to take a look at a test on two different 5-liter Fords, one of them a carbureted 302, the other a fuel-injected 302. The carbureted version has a 174 Holley Wyand roots blower with a carburetor on top. The fuel-injected motor has a Kenny Bell twin-screw supercharger with fuel injection. We're going to run different camshafts and different pulleys. So what do you say? Let's find out what happens. Let's get things started on this supercharged cam business. We're going to take a look at a 5 liter Ford. This one is a 302. Now it had forged pistons and stock rod, stock crank, stock block. It just had forged pistons with a um, flat top and a valve relief so that we could put more camshaft in it later on. For this first test, we installed or had installed the factory E7TE heads. The only change we made to the heads was, was a valve spring upgrade because we would later be testing them with different camshafts. So they did have a valve spring upgrade, which allowed us to put bigger camshafts in. But otherwise, there was no porting or valve size change or anything. They were basically E7TE heads. We had a uh, Holly or Holly Wyand. 174 supercharger on it. We did not run this thing in a in this configuration, but when you look at this, you can think, well, this motor would have started out with a dual plane intake and a carburetor and, a, and an otherwise stock five liter. It had been in the 250 to 255 horsepower range. It's kind of where this thing would have started. So we ran the supercharger. And I'm going to take a look. We had, um, uh, we ran a couple of different blower pulleys on this had a six inch crank pulley to start out with and a 3.825 inch blower pulley on it so you can get the drive ratio from that and we had a 750 holly blower carburetor designed to work with that draw through roots kind of supercharger and a set of inch and five eighths long tube headers and it was run, as I said, with a stock 5-liter HO camshaft to begin with. So we ran this combination with that supercharger, and obviously we dialed in the air fuel and timing. We ran 30 degrees of total timing. When this thing is NA, it would want about 36 degrees of total timing is where it would make best power. Right? So with 30 degrees of timing, the jets in, the, in this particular carburetor were an 82 in the primary and 93 in the secondary. And we ran the supercharger equipped as such. Our supercharged 302 produced 440.7, so 441 horsepower. Peak torque checked in at 435.7 foot-pounds of torque. And the first change that we made, we actually made two changes at once. We put a set of aluminum heads on this thing, and we stepped up in camshaft. We should put, set a, uh, put a set of Canfield 170 heads on it. And here is the upgrade to the Canfield aluminum heads and we also put a larger camshaft in it. This one was a Comp Extreme Energy 264 and I'll go ahead and put the specs up here for the cam and the Canfield heads were, uh, they work fairly well. 170s are fairly, fairly small but really good for kind of a stockish or a mild um, 302 combination. So equipped with the new heads and camshaft we didn't make any changes to the blower pulley or the crank pulley. Up near 500 horsepower, 494 horsepower. Peak torque checked in at 467 foot-pounds. So this is a real good combination. The 264 cam, very mild, um, easily drivable, and, and having a set of aluminum heads, obviously much better than the factory iron heads. The final change that we made was basically to go up or down in pulley size on the blower to spin the blower faster. We're going to go over the all the boost changes when, with this next. So you can see stepping up, we stepped up in pulley size from the 3.825 to or down to a 3.25 inch pulley. So a pretty good size change in pulley. And obviously we're spinning the blower faster, making more boost, making more power. Equipped with a pulley change, power jumped up to 524 horsepower. Peak torque checked in at 508 foot-pounds of torque. And notice how in each kind of change we were going up you know, a good amount all the way through the curve. That's important. We didn't just get more peak power. We got more power everywhere. So now let's take a look and see what the change in boost was associated with each one of these combinations. 
Now we've gone over the power changes associated with each one of the modifications we made on the carbureted supercharged 302. We can take a look at what happened to the boost pressure. So this was our combination, our base combination run with the supercharger with the 3.825 pulley stock heads and the stock camshaft. So you can see we started out at about five and a half pounds down here at 3,500 and then it rose and it rose fairly rapidly toward the end because we're really building up a, a lot of resistance basically in the motor. The stock cam's really mild, the stock heads are really mild and so the blower is spinning and the boost is just going up and up and up. So this is actually not a good thing and we'll see when we made our changes what happens to the boost and I can show you that actually less boost is definitely the way to go here. And then more boost is the way to go. So let's take a look and see what happened when we put our cylinder heads and camshaft upgrade on our combination. You can see we dropped boost. So we dropped peak boost by, oh, you know, from nearly eight and a half to 6.7. So good drop and boost, um, less of a drop and boost down low, more of a drop and boost at the top where the thing was quite a bit obviously less efficient. And then here's what happened. Here was our final change when we sped the blower up by putting the smaller blower pulley on, the 3.25. So you can see big change in boost, big change in boost everywhere. That's what happens with a pulley change. You add boost as you're spinning the blower faster all the time. So more boost everywhere. And it started out at about nine pounds here at 3,500 and rose to almost 10 and a half here out at 6,100. So you can see our first uh, change adding the camshaft and cylinder heads dropped boost which we wanted to do and then we added boost now you could do even more if this motor were a bigger displacement if it were a 351 if we put even more camshaft in it because that was fairly mild and maybe even more cylinder head maybe port the intake on the blower there's a lot of things you can do this is what happens when you change the combination and what effect it has on boost our next test was also run on a 302 this one was slightly more modified starting out it was a factory 302 short block with extra ring gap in it. It had a set of Airflow Research 185 heads on it, but it did have, we started out with the stock camshaft. For intake manifolds, it actually had a GT40 lower intake manifold and then a Kenny Bell twin screw supercharger on it. And the, and the discharge, basically, the upper manifold from the Kenny Bell was designed to mate to the GT40 lower. It also had the bigger Flowzilla intake going into the blower and a 90 millimeter throttle body, a set of inch and five eighths headers, just like with the previous test run on the carbureted version. In fact, they were the same hooker inch and five eighths long tube headers that we run on most of the five liter stuff. The thing about this one is we ran it with the factory harness and a factory ECU and just did chip tuning. This test was done way back. So the tuning might not be optimum the way that it normally is when we run the Holly or the fast stuff, but it gives you a fair, it still gives you a fairly good idea of what the changes are. <clears throat> so this is our combination run with the stock cam and the Kenny Bell. And, and like the previous test, I'll show you what happened to the boost curves too with the various changes. But run in this manner with the Kenny Bell, this combination made 438 horsepower and 437 foot-pounds of torque. So horsepower and torque were very, very similar. Here's what happened when we put the first of our two camshafts in it. It was a Comp Extreme Energy 258 cam. I'll go ahead and put the specs up here. Fairly mild, good cam for like daily driving and stuff. You can see it made more power everywhere compared to the factory cam. And that probably would have continued all the way down low. The the twin screw blower has immediate boost response, and so you get lots of torque down low. So even even down at 2,000 and 2,500 where people want me to run these things, uh, this thing would have still been doing very well. I think we were running into maybe a little bit of um, valve float issue with this cam out at the top, but the peak power jumped up to 456 horsepower, and peak torque was up to 449 foot-pounds. Then we installed another camshaft. Extreme Energy 274 cam, and again, you can see out at 6,000 RPM, uh, we ran into, a, 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 again, a valve float problem. We probably should have changed the springs on the Airflow Research heads. For some reason, they weren't um, up to snuff, I guess, with what we were doing with these camshafts and the boost, but run with the, the larger Extreme Energy 274 cam, and again, we'll go ahead and put the specs up here. 485 horsepower and peak torque was up to 456 foot-pounds of torque. 
So the final thing that we did, because we were so close to 500 horsepower, is obviously we wanted to get to 500 horsepower, so we did what you always do. We changed the pulley and increased the boost, and then managed to push it up over 500 horsepower. As we see with these kinds of blowers, when we change the pulley, we get more power everywhere, so more boost and more power everywhere. Peak power jumped up to 508 horsepower, and peak torque was up to 482 foot-pounds. So now let's take a look and see what the changes in boost are associated with these changes in power on this fuel-injected 302 with a Kenny Bell. So here are the boost curves associated with the power changes that we showed on the Kenny Bell Supercharged 302, and we ran our different camshafts and then obviously increased the boost pressure. This looks like it's a dramatic change just because of the scale. The whole scale on this is two tenths of a pound. So the change is essentially nothing. It changed from, you know, 8.5 at 3,500 to 8.6 out at uh, 5,800 or 5,900. So a tenth of a pound. So essentially this just had a flat boost curve all the way across. And we'll see that when we change to another run where we can take a look. So we, uh, what we did was change the, I'll, I'll show you one of the camshafts. Unfortunately, the the smaller 258 cam, the logging didn't work very well. We didn't get a good clean um, boost curve on the on the smaller cam. But here's the bigger cam. This is the Extreme Energy 274 cam, and you can see. And now you can kind of get a better view of the how flat the boost curve was on the Kenny Bell with a stock cam. After putting the Extreme Energy 274 cam in, we dropped boost down to about seven and a half pounds. And it, it remained seven, between seven and a half and 7.6 pounds. So it stayed fairly consistent, but it dropped a, a full pound of boost from the cam change. And then here's what happened when we step things up to our pulley change. Now it's making a little over nine pounds, uh, 9.1 pounds and creeped up to a peak of you know, 9.2. So again, you're only changing about a tenth of a pound. So the boost provided by the Kenny Bell was consistent through the whole curve, almost regardless of what camshaft we had and all, and also regardless of what pulley combination we had on here. So a nice, even consistent curve, which was nice. This combination worked well, you know, made over 500 horsepower at uh, about nine pounds of boost. Pretty good stuff. Let's get to our conclusion. Okay, guys, what do we learn from this little adventure running different camshafts and different boost levels on our supercharged 5 liter motors, both the carbureted version and the fuel injected version. Obviously, both of them responded the same way as will any motor. That's right. It doesn't matter whether it's a Chevy or Ford or Dodge or Honda or whatever it is. If you have a positive displacement supercharger on your motor and you improve the efficiency of the motor underneath the supercharger, you're definitely going to lower the boost. But as we saw, that's a good thing. Less boost, more power. That's the perfect combination. That's why I always suggest you maximize the power output of your NA motor and then add boost to that and then good things will happen. Now, the converse of that is let's make more power with more boost and we do that by spinning the supercharger faster both on the roots blower that we ran on the carburetor version and on the fuel injected version with the Kenny Bell twin screw supercharger. Changing the pulley increases the speed of the blower. It supplies more airflow, more boost, and more power. I'm Richard Holder. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. More testing coming up.